Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm doing another in my Disney flashback series and if you're not familiar with this series or haven't seen it before, basically I'm going back through the catalog of Disney animated movies and some I haven't seen for a very long time. As we get through them some I'll probably have seen more recently but I'm going back to rewatch them and see what I remembered, what I didn't remember, what I thought of them, and share that with you. So if you have missed any of this series, I do have a playlist with all the videos that I've done so far, so you can go and check them out. I started out with Snow White and have done them pretty consecutively after that. There's some here and there that are not as well-known ones because it's going to take me a long time to get through all of the movies. I'm not gonna do every single one, but at least those that I know are popular or I enjoy. I'm up to 1951 and today we're going to be talking about Alice in Wonderland. Now this isn't one that I watched as much as a kid as I did other Disney movies and I would say I don't know why that is but after we get through talking about it I kind of know why that is. But I did really enjoy a show that was on the Disney Channel. I think it was called Adventures in Wonderland or something like that. Basically, it'd be about a half hour show where the girl Alice would go through her mirror into Wonderland. And if you've seen it, give this a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. But I'm going to jump right in because I have a feeling today is going to be a long video. So let's get to it. So we still continue with the long opening credit sequence as we have in the other movies that I've spoken about. There was no book opening in the beginning of this one though. During the credit sequence, a song plays that is about Wonderland. It says, how do you get to Wonderland? And mentions a sunny afternoon, and that's the general idea of it. And while it sounded vaguely familiar, I didn't really remember it all that well. The movie begins with Alice in a tree daydreaming while she is supposed to be getting a lesson of some kind. Originally I thought the woman was her teacher or her tutor as that's kind of how she presents herself, but in doing further research it is Alice's sister. Alice has a cat named Dinah, which is something that I didn't remember about the movie. I didn't remember the character of Dinah. Alice is talking to her sister and she says in her, meaning Alice's world, all books would have pictures, and her sister says, that's nonsense. And Alice goes on to say that if I had a world of my own, everything would be nonsense. Nothing would be what it is because everything would be what it isn't. I did enjoy this part and thought it was cute because after Alice says that part, they zoom in on Dinah and she looks completely confused, which is kind of how I felt. As the lesson continues, Alice starts to sing a little song to herself about her world, and in it she says that the rabbits would be dressed in shoes and trousers. A little foreshadowing, perhaps? I didn't remember Alice singing when I thought back about this movie before rewatching it. I didn't remember that she sang at all, but she does, and just as she finishes up her song, the white rabbit runs by. She notices he is wearing a coat and trousers which she had just been singing about. So she chases after him, follows him into a tunnel, and then falls down a hole. Once Alice is finished falling, she comes upon a door that she cannot fit through because the door is too small. She wants to continue to follow the white rabbit, so the doorknob talks to her and tells her to drink the liquid which is on the table. Then, once she does drink it, the liquid shrinks her down to the proper size. But then the doorknob says, well, you forgot the key. It's up on the table. Thanks, doorknob. You couldn't have mentioned that before I shrunk myself. So, of course, she is too small to get up there now. Then, out of nowhere, a box appears, and it's full of biscuits. So Alice eats a biscuit. It causes her to grow larger, but not back to her normal human size. Instead, she grows beyond that. She's somewhat giant-like. This wasn't the outcome Alice was looking for, so she begins to cry. Because she is so large, her tears begin to fill the room, and the space starts to flood. The bottle she originally drank from floats by in her pool of tears, so she drinks it again, 
making her small, and as she goes to shrink small, she ends up landing in the bottle that she just drank from and floating along with the bottle right through the doorknob lock. Now we move on to a little while later, Alice is continuing to chase after the white rabbit and she comes upon Tweedledee and Tweedledum. To me, they were a bit confusing. I found them difficult to understand at times, but I think that's the point. They ask Alice why she is chasing the white rabbit. She says, because she is curious. And they say, oh, the oysters were curious too. This grabs Alice's attention because she wants to know what happened to the curious oysters. Then Tweedledee and Tweedledum go into a song about the walrus and the carpenter and what happened to the oysters. Now, if you want the full story, I recommend watching the movie, but for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through the entire story of the walrus and the carpenter. Let's just say that the walrus and the carpenter trick the oysters so that they can eat them. The walrus ends up double-crossing the carpenter and eating them all himself. The point of the story is that the oysters got curious by what the walrus and the carpenter told them and left the safety of their home to follow them and go with them and in turn got eaten. So that's kind of the word of caution to Alice about being curious. When the story is over, Alice says, that was a sad story. Tweedledee and Tweedledum say, it has a moral. And Alice replies, yes, it has, if you're an oyster. Moving along on Alice's journey, she comes upon some flowers that talk and sing. She finds all different varieties of flowers, tulips, morning glories, daffodils, violets, and many more. And they are all featured and talked about in the song they are singing, Golden Afternoon. Well, I didn't remember this song before re-watching it, meaning it's not one that would come to my mind as a Disney song when I think of Disney songs. I did recognize it once I heard it, and I do remember it and think it is a, one of the more well-known ones from the movie. So of all the songs in the movie, I think Golden Afternoon is probably one of the more well-known ones. After some discussion, Alice and the flowers have a misunderstanding. They end up thinking she is a weed and therefore offend her, but ultimately tell her to leave. Next, Alice comes upon the caterpillar, humming and smoking. Everything he says comes out in letters in his smoke. So for example, when he says, who are you, it would spell the W-O-H, are you so you can kind of see as he's saying his smoke turns into letters alice says to him how confusing everything is and she cannot remember things the way she used to he then proceeds to tell her a story after the story he says who are you and blows smoke in her face very rude so alice gets annoyed understandably, and leaves. But the caterpillar says, come back, I have something to say. So she makes her way back to him. And when she does, he says, keep your temper. Alice replies, is that it? The conversation goes on and Alice ends up telling the caterpillar that she would like to be taller, but accidentally insults his height. So then the caterpillar gets mad goes up in a puff of smoke and turns into a butterfly. It was all a bit odd, but as he's leaving, flying away as a butterfly, he says to her, one side will make you grow taller, the other side will make you grow shorter. But he doesn't explain what he's referring to. Alice is confused. So then he flies back to tell her, the mushroom, of course. And then she realizes that she's sitting on a mushroom and that's what he is referring to. Alice is not sure which side is which, so she takes a bite of one side and it makes her giant. She then tries the other side, but it makes her too small. So after taking a little time to think, she goes back to the side that makes you large and just licks it instead of taking a full bite. And then she is her normal size again. She hangs onto the pieces of mushroom she has left, she tucks them in her pockets, and then she hears more singing. It's the Cheshire Cat. 
I don't know if it's Cheshire, Cheshire, I don't know. Once Alice sees that it's a cat, she's excited. She asks which way she should go, and the Cheshire cat says he went that way, as in the white rabbit, but then acts like he doesn't know what she's talking about. It's again a bit confusing. Then he tells her, if you are looking for a white rabbit, I might ask the Mad Hatter or the March Hare. Alice mentions she would rather not associate with mad people. The Cheshire Cat responds by saying, everyone's mad here. Alice comes upon the Mad Hatter's house and they are singing the unbirthday song. During the tea party, Alice never gets to drink her tea because the Mad Hatter is always telling them to pick up and move around the table meaning they change the teacup that they are drinking from as well. So she never gets a moment to take a sip before having to move again. So she'll be just ready to drink it and he'll say, okay, time to move. And she'll have to move over to the next seat and the next cup. And that just keeps happening. The Mad Hatter frustrates Alice with his antics and craziness as she is about to leave. The White Rabbit comes along. But then the Mad Hatter ruins the White Rabbit's pocket watch by putting butter, jam, tea, among other things, inside the watch. Then the Mad Hatter and the March Hare throw the rabbit over the hedge. So, leave our tea party, go over that hedge, you're out of here. Alice says while storming off, this is the stupidest tea party I've ever been to. She then goes on to say, I've had enough of nonsense. I'm going straight home. That rabbit, who cares where he's going anyway? So when the movie began, all she wanted was a world of nonsense. And now she's had enough of nonsense. After she goes walking for a bit, trying to find her way home, she says it would be so nice if something would make sense for a change. She then stumbles upon some mom rats, I think is how you pronounce it, M-O-M-E-R-A-T-H-S, mom rats, who point her to a path. So she thinks that's the way home. As she is following the path, a dog with a broom for a head comes along and sweeps the path away. Now Alice is discouraged and upset and says, when one's lost, I suppose the best thing to do is stay where you are until someone finds you. But who's ever going to think to look for me here? Maybe if I listened earlier, I wouldn't be here. But that's the trouble with me. I give myself good advice, but very seldom follow it. Then she begins to sing another song. Now, the Cheshire Cat is quite the instigator. Alice says she wants to find her way home, and he tells her, there is no way, it's only the queen's way. Then he tells her, you have to meet her. She'll be mad about you. But he really meant it, she'll be mad about you. Next, Alice follows a maze and comes upon some cards that are painting the roses red, which I think is another one of the more well-known songs from this movie. As has been the case with some of the other movies I've talked about, I would have thought the Queen of Hearts would have had more of a role in the movie, seeing as she's the villain and one of the more well-known characters, but she's only in the last 20 minutes of the movie. The queen challenges Alice to a game of croquet, but this being Wonderland, they don't use regular croquet equipment. Instead, they use animals for the mallet and the ball. So there's a little hedgehog type animal that is the ball that curls itself up and rolls and then what looks like a flamingo or some type of bird that they use as the mallet. The queen cheats, or everyone involved cheats for her to keep her happy because they are so terrified of what will happen if things don't go her way, because if things don't go her way, she just yells and says off with their head to anyone that makes her mad. Of course, Alice gets a bum mallet or the animal they gave her is not cooperating. Then the Cheshire Cat shows up again to cause more mischief. On a side note, at this point, we find out that the entire time, the White Rabbit has been rushing and running late. You know, he says in the beginning, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Well, the thing that he was running late for is to get to the Queen to announce her entrance. 
After the Cheshire Cat pulls his stunt during the game of croquet, the Queen thinks it's Alice, since the Cheshire Cat appears and disappears all the time. She gets very angry and, of course, says to Alice, off with her head. The King says to the Queen, but couldn't we have a trial? And I didn't remember there being a King, but he definitely caters to the Queen's every wish. She's basically the one with the power and in charge. She agrees to have a trial, but it is not a proper trial and goes exactly as the Queen plans because it is all under her rule. Witnesses are called, including the Mad Hatter. He tells the Queen it's her unbirthday and they give her a crown. The crown turns into the Cheshire Cat. And if you're following at this point, good for you because it's confusing and doesn't make a lot of sense. As Alice is waiting for the trial to be finished, she reaches into her pockets and remembers the mushrooms she put there. She eats one and grows large. And then the king tells her, everyone larger than a mile high must leave the court. Alice replies, I'm not a mile high and I'm not leaving. Now that Alice is a giant, the queen is afraid of her and Alice starts to tell her off. But as she is doing this, she begins shrinking back down. So evidently the mushroom wore off or something. I don't know. Once she's not large anymore, the queen tells the cards off with her head and they begin to chase after Alice as she runs away. As she's running, she's kind of retracing the steps that she's taken throughout the movie, running past the characters she's encountered through the water and ultimately back to the door or the doorknob. She cannot get through the door and the queen's cards are gaining on her. The door points out to her through the keyhole. You're already outside, Alice. And she can see herself asleep by the tree. The movie ends with Alice waking up and the entire story being a dream, which I had a feeling would be the case. As I was remembering it because it's been so long, I had a feeling that it was all a dream, but I couldn't remember specifically if that's what happened, but it is. But I guess it's really the only ending that could fit because how else would you explain such an odd, strange and confusing world? Now I know some people absolutely love this movie and it is their favorite, but if I'm honest, it was not my favorite. I think the fact that it was odd and confusing at times was a big part of it. I found myself having trouble getting into it and being invested to the point that when I was watching it and taking my notes, I even had to take a bit of a break from it because I just couldn't stay engaged and focused on it. There are certainly other Disney movies that I prefer, but let me know. Do you love Alice in Wonderland? Is this your favorite? Do you not really like it? I'd love to know your thoughts about it down in the comments. Maybe it's been a really long time since you've seen it, so you could revisit it if you think you'd be interested, but not one that I would be picking as a first choice out of the Disney movie catalog. But I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Disney Flashback. Make sure that you're subscribed so that you can see the next one and all of my other videos. I know what the next one's going to be, but I'm not sure exactly when I will get to it because we're coming up on the holidays and I'm going to have Vlogmas and holiday videos. So I'm not sure when I'd be able to fit that one in. So it could potentially be January when you'll be seeing the next one. But let me know down in the comments which one you are excited to see and hear about. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a magical day.